Yeah. So he had me last week going like this. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so you watched it. That's good. At okay. least you watched it. Hearing. Hey, and when you pick like the freeze frame to put on the front, how about you not do one where I look like a goober, okay? <laughs> I actually <laughs> don't have a lot of choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's it would require a lot of editing. Yeah, seriously. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, what are we talking about? Yeah. Okay, why don't we start there? Sarah is great. Look up there. And put Bob at the end of the list. Bob, Bob is Bob is great. Bob is all right. He's he's Walking all right. coffee. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh yeah. Thanks to you. Oh, that's Thank right. You. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. Um in honor of Valentine's Day. No, not in honor of Valentine's Day. <laughs> but in general, you're you're great. We learned that this week. You got yes. a, you got an award. Did you get the press release? <laughs> what was the award you got? Um, I got the Legislative Leader of the Year Award for uh, from Renewable Energy Vermont. That is awesome. Um, nice ceremony. Big group of um, you know the just the kind of uh, solar installers and and, and uh, renewable energy developers that that we yeah. love to see more of. Um, the job creators. I yeah, was stuck exactly. in committee. Uh, actually talking about energy bills, so yeah. that was good, but I yeah. couldn't come or I quickly saw you there, but I, yeah. anyway, congratulations. You, you jogged through, I saw you. I jogged you. through, yeah. had a little snack. Yeah. Uh, no, anyway, you made it home in time for your concert. Well, yeah, kids stuff. Kid, I was late. I was father of the year. Um, okay, <laughs> well, congratulations. Well, thanks. Well deserved. It was quite an honor and uh, wonderful to be among those uh, those awesome job creators because, you know, they want to know how can we do more? Why aren't we doing more? What you know? Thank you so much for the, the uh, for the work of the climate caucus. They said, but how can we help you right. make sure you get your bills across the line? So, well, let's tell folks how they can do more. Yes, absolutely. What's going on in the house? Yeah. So big big, big news this week: Global Warming Solutions Act came out of House Energy and Technology. Um, it was a seven to two vote. Um, nine members of that committee. Uh, so uh, in, independent, I think, right? An, an independent, uh, progressive. progressive and some Democrats, the two Republicans um, could not get around to supporting it. Um, so interestingly, you know, I don't know if we wanna talk about the uh, the proposal that the administration made on behalf of the yeah, governor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so, so first just give us a recap. Um, yeah. Global Warming Solutions Act. So Global Warming Solutions Act uh, is um, basically sets into statute as requirements, Paris in the near term, um, and uh, and subsequent goals up out to uh, net zero in uh, 2050. Like Maine and New York have done in with, the last couple of year, last right, year. Right, this puts sets into a line with what our neighbors in the region are doing, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is very helpful just so that we're all sort of moving at the same pace. Um, and hopefully sharing best practices and good information. Right, right. Um, and the you know the real uh, the real meat of the bill is the creation of this climate council, which is you know m multiple uh, members of state government agencies, but also some other folks around the table. They're Experts tasked from with state, yep, right? and yep. they're tasked with creating the plan, yeah. right? And and they're going to create the plan. Um, they're going to promulgate any rules or regulatory changes that need to happen because of that plan, they're gonna bring that back to the legislature, obviously, and we will have to maybe make some statutory changes or right. appropriations for- And the plan has, is sort of, how do we get to yeah. Paris goals, net zero? Yeah, what's gonna and, be required. Yeah. 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 Um, for the first time, this will be all, all parts of state government focusing right. on how to how to meet our goals, um, and then you know the the right of action for Vermonters to be able to say you're not doing um, what you said you were going to do is basically around did they write the plan? Yeah, and then in subsequent years is the plan working? Right, and right. if it's not working, um, then you know then the only remedy that they have. Uh, through the courts is for the courts to say go back and work on the plan again <laughs> and, and i think it's worth spending a little bit of time because we need your help helping vermonters understand what this is so yeah. some have said oh my god uh, we'll have lawsuits everywhere this is going to make why lawyers all lawsuit? across the state rich and blah, blah, blah. no not at all this is uh first of all uh, you know, the Clean Water Act at the federal level has a citizen right of action. This is very, uh, 
very standard actually, about half of our states have it around water, for instance, air quality. Um, and as I understand it, tell me if I've got this wrong, it's about a citizen saying, hey, you said we were gonna, we, the law is we're gonna meet the Paris uh, emission reductions. You're not meeting it. I'm standing up for the state to, to hold state government accountable. And then the judge says, you're right, we're not meeting it. To the, and then the judge would say, counsel, go back and, write go and, back and write make a, a stronger plan, plan yeah. right? And at that point, the if, if that were the outcome, the state would be liable to pay for the citizen's lawyer and, and expenses. There's no damages. There's no like, oh, sweet, I caught them. I'm getting a million bucks. There's none of that. Yeah. And, and on the other side, right. if citizens step forward and they just want to harass people and bring frivolous lawsuits, they could actually not only pay their own lawyer, but have to pay the state's cost for defending a, a frivolous lawsuit. So right. it's, it's very limited. Yeah. No one's making millions of dollars here. Right. It is a mechanism to hold state government accountable. We've yeah. been talking about these goals for 15 years. We are badly off track. And so this is a way to really hold it up. We, you know, Sarah and I may yeah. not be here. We don't know who the governor is going to be. We need a mechanism for Vermonters to stand up and say, no, nope, we're really serious about this climate change stuff. Yeah. yeah, so this that's why this bill is really foundational to all of the work that we're doing this year and what we'll do in future yeah. years, because yeah. it is the one way by making these requirements law that we can be sure we're all going to be sticking to the task. Um, so what did the governor do? Oh goodness! On the last day of the before the bill was voted out of committee, yeah. they um, the administration asked uh, for permission to testify, and even though it was supposed to be the final day and just sort of mm -hmm. dotting um, dotting eyes and crossing t's, the the chair made time for the administration to bring their proposal in, and it, you know it's so frustrating. They among other things, um, what they wanted to do was make sure that the enforceability didn't kick in until 2050. 2050. If, 2050. If we miss, once we're done, if we miss our goal cleaning, when, uh, when we're on, all dead. Really? Yeah, when we're all dead and gone. It's, my goodness. Anyway. By the um, way, the attorney general supports this bill, and yeah. and they were there, as I understand, their testimony was like, yeah, this is very straightforward. It's quite modest, mm -hmm. but an accountability yeah. measure. Wow, 2050. Yeah. So By then, we'll really hold our feet to the floor. That's right. And then, then we'll really mean it. You know. Oh, and, that's so frustrating. Until then, we should just work on the plan. That's what the governor said in his press conference yesterday. We'll just work on the plan. Well, you know, what's right. what's to stop you from having worked on the plan for the last three years since, since you you've been we, governor? Were, since yeah. you set, stood on a state house steps and said Vermont's going to uh, meet its Paris goal. So, all right, I'm getting amped up. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, very frustrating, and you know. I'll just say to folks who don't follow the legislature closely, I've been here since Jim Douglas was governor. The Douglas administration was in the committee rooms every day. Yeah. They were part of these discussions. They were haggling. We were compromising. We yeah. came out with policies. Yeah. The Scott administration, they don't even come. Yeah. They are rarely in the room. Yeah. They're doing a little bit more lately, but the idea that they would come in on the last day and be like, hey, uh, we want to be part of this discussion yeah. is maddening. Yeah. And then to drop these kinds of uh, ridiculous ideas. Yeah, ridiculous I mean, and then, ideas. and so now they'll say, well, we were part of the discussions uh, and they just wouldn't compromise. Right. You know, it's like, yeah. it's very frustrating. And, it, and it's just from, from us who we go through this hour by hour, yeah. it's tough because we end up guessing what they could support and what they wouldn't support. Anyway. Anyway, it's past time yeah. to try so to read their So that bill lines. is now in House Approach? It is in appropriations. I expect it'll come out, you know, either today or on Tuesday. And that means it can be up on the floor of the House for debate next week, which That'd is where the next call to action is going to come yeah, from. Yeah, please. It's um, time to reach out on this one. We have 87 co-sponsors of the bill. Uh, of course, we want to make sure that all of them stay strong and hear from their constituents you know, to say thank you for, for co-sponsoring this bill. But then what would be really nice is to get up into the mid to high 90s in terms of votes on the floor. And I yeah. think that that's possible. Uh, we really need you all to be reaching out to your house member right now and say, please, please, please support the bill. You have no idea. Getting four emails makes a difference yeah. in our little districts. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Wynn Smith, mm -hmm. former owner of yeah. Sugarbush, said, please pass this. Yeah. 
well, yeah. he's no, he's no raging liberal. I right. Mean, no. That was good. That, that yeah. you know, the ski industry, of course, has been uh, vocal about climate change. They, they feel it in a big way uh, or very sensitized to it. Yeah. And, and they know that we need some mechanism to bend all of the attention of state government to solving the problem. Yeah. And I, I, I want to say, as I think we said this last week, but part of the plan gets us ready for when the federal government gets a clue. Mm -hmm. And they start, yeah. when the federal government finally decides they're going to deal with climate mm -hmm. emergency, they're going to look to states and be like, you got any projects that will help us? Right, yeah. And we're going to say, yes, yes please. Yes, we Can do. you help us fund X, Y, and Z? And so I think that's really exciting. Um, Hi, come on in. <laughs> we have, I, I want to talk about two random things that happened in my life did, this week. Did you want to tell us about chicken? I did. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Senate Ag and House Ag went to visit a chicken farm and, and, People say, well, what does this have to do with climate change? It was yesterday. I thought, thought you smelled a little Come funny. on. <laughs> so this is absolutely related to climate. Um, we have in Vermont, starting July 1, our universal, uh, what do we call it, universal recycling law, which has been phased in over many years. Composting. Um, too. Composting. Yeah. And, and um, on July 1, everyone in Vermont is, uh, all food waste is meant <laughs> to be diverted from the we have, over the years, diverted big institutions like hospitals and schools and the state house um, down to restaurants. Uh, we've, we've diverted already about a third of our food waste from the landfill. And the idea is with citizens, and it, it's not going to happen overnight on July 1st, but we will now triple the amount of, of compost that we're making. Mm -hmm. Okay, This is actually worldwide two or two, one or two of the top five best strategies for reducing emissions is uh, handling food waste. Um, now, in Vermont, we have a handful of farmers who feed uh, food waste to their chickens. Their chickens feed off of, uh, uh, not just like, here, go go grab the food scraps, but they, they mix it up, it's, it's sort of specialized. Yeah. They make very good eggs, high protein content. There's a guy here in Montpelier, Carl Hammer, been doing this for, for mm. decades. They create good topsoil. Um, and we've struggled with how we regulate them because ag says, well, they're not really farmers because they're dealing with all this compost. And, and the A&R says, well, they're compost. That's a waste. That's a waste. You can't food, field, feed waste to chickens. Right. <laughs> Wait, so, natural resources and ag are having trouble uh, wrapping their brains around this? So last year we said, no, 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 let them keep doing this. It's a good practice. We want to figure out what to do. <clears throat> We're going to be able to figure out the chicken situation, and that is a piece of sustainability. Yep. More exciting to me, though, is we are going to have a lot of food waste that we're going to be diverting. And I, I want us to make sure, we're, we're trying to discuss this at Senate Ag, how we can let farmers receive food waste, not for chickens, mm -hmm. um, but just to make a little bit of uh, their own implements so that they make compost because climate change, flood resilience, uh, phosphorus runoff, all do better with yep. healthy soils, yep. exactly. Yep. So the state has a food waste problem. What are we gonna do with all this food waste? Right now, by the way, we're trucking it to Maine and they're burning it to just... make electricity. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> not all of it, not all of it. A bunch of it is made uh, here, but we yeah. gotta probably don't do that, ideally. But it could be a little, a little, a, you know, a diversified piece of a business on a dairy farm, for instance, where yeah. they're selling potting soil and helping their own inputs, so reducing mm -hmm. their own costs. Too much of a, too many smart ideas here. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're talking about that. I, I just think it's fascinating because it really hits the cyclical nature of, you know, people say, well, what does solid waste have to do with climate change? Well, here's here's part of what it has. Absolutely, it does. Yeah. And. Um, mm -hmm. Another cool thing that happened this yeah. week was we had in Senate Ag, we had a, a parade of, of kids coming in talking to farm, about farm to school. And the it, Rosa McLaughlin yes. farm to school program. Yes. And and by the way, you, this is, you know, I, I, I feel like it's very frustrating. We, we, we have it in spotty schools and we've, we've put out little grants to help schools yep. move along. But uh, our, the people involved in this work travel around the country, and we are absolutely the envy yeah. of the country. We are way far ahead in terms of getting local food into school. <laughs> That's funny, because there's local, so much more we yeah, could be doing. <laughs> yeah, right. So we are, I have a bill in, and we've been working on, I think we've talked about, to get incentives to school, 
cool is if you're if you're getting 25 percent of your food locally we'll give you 25 cents per lunch which is a big deal because they spend about a buck and a quarter per lunch yeah. so that'll help but we had kids coming in from i think from berlin or barry and mm -hmm. from cabot and these kids it was just so cool so yeah. it's not I, i'm interested in buying local produce from our farmers and getting it into the cafeteria that's yeah. sort of where i start yeah. But the farm to school movement has been much more holistic and they, these kids have gardens. Mm -hmm. They have uh, an understanding of compost and food yeah. waste. They have uh, part of these curriculums and connect them. They, they go to field trips to the farms and stuff like that. Helps them when the cafeteria brings out rutabaga. And the kids, my kids would be like, whoa, I've never done that. Did you see the gill feather turnips on, <laughs> yes. on the lunch line yeah. here at the cafeteria yes. this week? Yes. The, I had, the, the I had a gill feather turnip this week with my lunch. It was great. The curriculum has these kids be excited to try it. And that is a big part of the puzzle. The other thing, and, and then we can move on, but <laughs> the other thing that I thought was really cool is Cabot does an annual harvest dinner where the kids bake bread, they harvest mm -hmm. their own gardens, yeah. and they have a ton, the kids put this on entirely. They have a ton of work to go into it. And so you know what they do? They make the kids fill out a resume and apply for their job oh, that's for the great. night. Now, I think that is so cool. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm saying, well, how do like, you get more carrots into the cafeteria? Yeah. And people were saying, well, if kids don't have job skills, right. you know, yeah. and you can't get them to show up on time. And oh, and so again, so there's these connections. For them to and the farmers come forward this. and they say, you know, it does our heart good. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of an economic uh, opportunity for us to supply an institution. But then you start to see this connection in the community. Mm -hmm. And they brought, brought us some bread, by the way, that they made. Oh, and nice. made. It's, it's really delicious. That's so great. it's very exciting. It's not a lot of money, but but this quarter of lunch idea would be like maybe two to three million dollars out of yeah. the school lunch programs, forty million dollars. Um, to just just make sure we're doing more and more connections to to our local farmers. I mean, why would we import tomatoes or eggs or beef mm. when we have farmers who are struggling to make enough money right here producing those. So right. that's what we're trying to do. Great job. Good, good work with the chickens and, and, yeah. the, and the school kids. It's been well, fun and I hope we'll get make some progress. I think we will. Yeah, great. Do you want to talk about uh, Springfield last night for TCI or do you want to just... just... Well, let's talk about it next week. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, we had a snowstorm that canceled the, the Burlington one. So on the 20th, um, in Contois, uh, yeah, auditorium in Burlington, City Hall, six o'clock. Yeah. Uh, this is a TCI roadshow. This is the last one, I think. Yes. Where, so we really need people, first of all, they've been small crowds. There's always some people that are sort of like climate change is a hoax, mm -hmm. but not many, not many, yeah. even, even in more conservative towns where you might think they'd come out, uh, not pitchforks here. Yeah. This is like 10% of the audience, four or five people yeah. come out. So Clearly the voices of people who are interested in addressing the transportation challenge in climate uh, have, have been prevailing, but it's really important that we have a good showing in Burlington. Uh, that's the 20th yeah. uh, in City Hall in Burlington, come to us in October. Excellent. So the only other thing that I wanted to say this week, yeah. Bob is great. Bob the green guy. He yeah. brings us, you, these videos. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Cool. <laughs> Did we bore you to death, Bob? You're not, oh, you're not I, asleep. How many cups of coffee did you have while we well, were Well, I always have my coffee, um, at least in the morning. Now, the good show, and um, I'll get to work on putting it together.